So here we are three years later. Um, a lot of things have changed. Um, in a sense of the dance scene since your portrayal of the movie, which I think is amazing. And, uh, and it gives a great insight to what the actual club culture is all about. People now uh, realise the difference between, you know, uh, funk, soul, house, hip hop, techno, drum and bass. You know, you kind of went out and you knew what you wanted to hear and the DJs you wanted to listen to and the bands you wanted to check out. Uh, where before it was all kind of like a new exciting thing. We, you know, we're just learning about all these DJs and artists. And now, you know, everyone, up to this point is more or less educated to the fact of the reason why I exist, why the Prodigy exists, why Oakenfolds exist, and everything else that goes with it. Um, but meanwhile, also the te technological aspect of, of uh, making music and creating music has also evolved into something amazing as well. Um, since then, you've, you, you know, obviously in the 70s, you had the turntables revolution and, uh, into the 80s, into the 90s, you know, and you had the whole kind of scratch hip hop DJ, DJ mix and everything. And, and you had DJs like Sasha, who was able to take two records and completely get them in, 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 into beat sync where, you know, he had uh, the ability to, to spot a tone of one record and mix that tone into another record. And, and the key of that record was exactly the same, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and he is, you know, still revered as one of the best DJs in the world that was able to do that. But now he's using a, a program called Ableton Live from computers. And a lot of, called Ableton Live. And a lot of DJs have started to use this kind of new concept by, by working, you know, still DJing, per se, but, but actually creating music from your laptop. And, um, and the Germans have created this program, which is absolutely amazing. And even I start to use this at the moment now, but it's in addition to what I do as DJ. So now that uh, you've got uh, people who have access to loads of music from, from download sites, you know, like Beatport or trackitdown.com, um, there's just a couple that I can mention, there's thousands more. But, um, you know, now we, where a lot of people used to go to record store to buy a record, now, you know, they're going home from school <laughs> and downloading music, you know, so they can either burn it onto CD or put it straight into their computer and play it from, a, you know, from one of the music programs called Ableton Live. There's another program out there called Serato, which you, could, which you still have the ability to have uh, uh, put a needle on the record, but basically the disc is made up of computer data. So basically, once you put the needle on the record, it kind of follows the line of computer data from a kind of time signature point of view. And then while it's playing the file, you're able to actually see your record on file of which you want to play the record from, from a turntable. It sounds kind of, <laughs> kind of technical, but, it's, but you're able to pl still play music from a DJ, DJ's point of view, but all the music is from your laptop. Yeah, it is in one sense, but also it's the way forward in another. Because there's a lot of people who don't have the ability to mix, but are able to, um, uh, to, to understand the concept of how you mix with it. So, you know, so there's more creativity with inside it. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've been DJing for many, many years, you know, and it comes to a point where, you know, it should get easier. It should, it, there should be another way to, to make you feel that you're a part of the new wave generation, mm -hmm. you know. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like if I started off with a really old, you know, car from 1966 and I've still got a, the same old car now from 1966, all the younger cars would have just passed me, you know, and they've got air conditioning in their cars and a nice big sound system where I'm still got the window wound down and, you know, boiling hot and, and, uh, and, and probably, uh, you know, I end up with a flat tire. And <laughs> but do you, you think know. vinyl, there's a different quality to even hearing vinyl? I mean... Doesn't it sound different? Yeah, no, it does. You know, vinyl has this warm, beautiful panache about the sound about vinyl, um, and and everything else around that. You know, in the sense of music files, MP3, uh, AIFF, they all sound digitized. But the thing is, if anyone goes out on the dance floor and hears this type of music, no one's going to know if it's MP3, AAAC, or or AIFF. They're not going to. They're, all they're going to hear is the music. So. You know, it, the thing is about it, it's coming, this whole digital new wave sound and everything that's going on with it. We can't do anything to stop it. It's already, you know, so many record labels have gone down because of it. So many record labels have, have gone from selling vinyl into just music download sites now. Um, it's, it's just, you know, the, the age of, of technology has, has basically ruined the age-old way of how you made music, how you played music and how you bought music. 
but it's just the 21st century and uh, and now we have to embrace it you know otherwise we just get left behind it's just things have just changed in the way that it's performed now you know and to be honest a lot of those a lot of those times you know there was a lot of good mixing and a lot of bad mixing as well because things would happen where you know the needle would jump off the record or 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 you know you know you had the wrong beat i mean all these things were really great because they're, 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 it was kind of added character to what you did but i've always been a stippler for perfection you know and and i can perfect what i do now even though it's not as uh, i would say not as exciting um, but uh, not not as much action as it, as it was but but from what from a creative musical point of view there's so much going on so it comes to a point where okay the dj's i can't see what the dj's doing but what i'm hearing is absolutely amazing and this is where i think if I have to mention anyone, Sasha kind of still gets points for doing what he's doing, even though he's not playing any turntables or any CDs whatsoever, because what he's actually creating is magic. And, and, and that's coming from the speakers. And, and with this, this is something which a lot of people are turned on to. There's a lot of people who are turned off as well. But I think everyone's always scared of the future, always scared of what's, what's around the corner, what happens next. You know, having turntables was understood. Now that it's not understood and it's coming to, you know, we have something threatening the turntablism or, or way how, how DJs used to perform into what how DJs are performing now, that's a scary thing, you know. But the thing was about what I liked about turntablism was there was only, you know, I said a few that could really rock the turntables. And then you had a few DJs that could just play them and, and, and it'd be fine. And then there's other DJs that thought, you know what, I can't do that. <laughs> I'll go, you know, <laughs> I'll go play tennis or badminton or something, you know. But meanwhile, you know, with the computer, as you know, long as you had everything on time, you know, uh, from a file point of view, and all these machines can actually, you know, nail on mix for you, you know. All you've got to do is push the start at the right point, and they can actually, yeah. you know, they can actually yeah. mix those records in. That's a bit of a sad day. You know, because yeah. you know the worst the worst mix in the world on turntables could be the best mixer in the world from a computer, which is a, which is kind of like uh, uh, contradictory in terms in some ways. It's a bit of a shame because I mean I I've always been a vinyl junkie. I've always you know went to record record fairs, record shops, you know buying music from from uh, uh, all sorts of different places. You know I kind of go past an antique store and, and I see like a you know load of bells and, and clothes and stuff like that and a little back box of you know uh, seven inch records. I mean oh what's in there? You know and I'll be finding. I'll be, oh I'll be looking for that for years. You know and then I'll be, and then I have it. You know but now when you got like a music file. It doesn't feel like that at all. <laughs> it's just like you know, you know, I, I kind of you know borrowed it from someone else, and I'm able to play that. And then not only am I able to play it, I'm able to edit it now, manipulate it into my own Carl Cox edit, which is you know, it's a great thing to do. But the the sexiness of it has gone. That's the thing about it. So it is an end of an era in one sense, but a beginning of another one into the future. Um, and as far as I'm I'm concerned, you know, as long as I I'm embracing it and seeing that it's actually a good thing and not a bad thing uh, in a sense of performance and then not all is lost, you know, because the music still prevails.